in this presentation. We hope that we can show you the different process control methods that we were able to come up with for the complicated problem of distillation and be able to recommend to you uh, the best one. Um, as you'll be able to see, there's a lot of different control methods, but uh, we hope that through our presentation you'll be able to know that we came up with the best one. And so the problem is that in a distillation column, um, through separation worldwide, is that they actually take up 6% of the energy uh, that we use. Uh, it's a large portion of the demand for energy. So any company that is able to uh, reduce the energy they use in distillation really has a competitive edge against their competitors. And so the goal we have is to be able to control your distillation column and to be able to have the least amount of energy loss. And so we do that by controlling uh, the concentrations that are coming out. Um, so for your, uh, for this specific distillation column, we're separating two different components. So it's a binary system of cyclohexane and heptane, where there's 30 trays and the feed is coming in through at the middle. Um, so what we wanted to do is we wanted to really control uh, the mass balances throughout it. And so we, we did that by being able to change the reflux ratio or the fraction of the feed coming out by opening and closing some valves uh, through our control process. So Dr. Hedengren, you can see our block diagram. The uh, two blocks in red were for the feed forward controls. So without them, it's just uh, two non-interacting um, control loops and um, so that's what we did first. The second one we decided to do a static interacting and so we incorporated those two transfer functions and just had them as gains. And so third we decided to use um, dynamic model and we changed the transfer function on the right but we discovered you can't change the one on the left because our top disturbance model is only a gain. Um, we decided to do that because it was just, it was the best way to model the disturbance. There was a lot of trouble with the parameters. And uh, so our results, there are three step tests we did. The first one, 0.05 in the feed disturbance. The second one, 0.05 in the uh, distillate and the third one, 0.05 in the bottoms. And Rebecca will tell you more about each of these. All right. so this original graph we gave you is a lot of information at once. So we're going to break it down, hopefully, so we can see a little better what's actually going on here. And so um, in this graph right here, we, we have our bottom stream and our distillate stream for each of the uh, interacting and non-interacting, where the interacting is both dynamic and static. So that's why we have six lines on that graph there. And so what we found is that really no matter what type of control we were using, they all got uh, rejected the disturbance in about the same amount of time. So as a criteria for which one of those was best, we wanted to look at the one that had the smallest peak. And so our interacting or our non-interacting controllers, unsurprisingly, they had the, the biggest peak. And so we were able to drop that down in both our static and our dynamic interacting controllers. Um, and those actually dropped down by about the same amount. There wasn't really that clear of an advantage to one over the other in this particular instance. Um, but the next graph, I think this next one is really interesting. I think you'll like it. Um, this shows just the distillate change that goes on. And so when we have a non-interacting controller, we get a pretty good uh, change in our distillate, but we also get quite the change in our uh, bottoms concentration, which of course is not what we want. And when we, even when we add our static interacting controller, we still get um, a significant change in our, in our uh, bottoms concentration. But with our um, dynamic controller, you see the, this red dotted line here is our bottoms dynamic interacting controller. We were able to get our distillate stream to change, to have our set point change pretty nice, and our bottom stream barely changed at all. So we were really happy with the way that control worked out there. And in this case, we can see that there's a really clear advantage to our dynamic interacting controller. Now, of course, you can't always get something for nothing. And in our next graph, we'll see that um, we, in, the, in this graph here, we had a, a bottom set point change. 
and again, all, most of the bottom stream changed about the same. There wasn't really a clear advantage in the, in the bottom stream. And this one, the dynamic interacting controller was actually the worst for the distillate stream. And so what, what we're thinking is that there's kind of a, a give and take there. If we get better control in one stream, we're getting worse control in the other. But this change here that we had in our, in our distillate stream with the bottom step point change is a lot smaller than any of these changes that we have with our static controller or non-interacting controller. So even despite the fact that we still get a small change in our distillate stream, we would still recommend the dynamic interacting uh, feedback system. And so that's what we, we came up with as a solution to this problem. And do you have any questions? <laughs>